Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Konstantinos Kalogerakis. Uh, greetings from Athens, Greece. Uh, I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at uh, Crowd Policy, and uh, my presentation will be about the future of payments towards an automated and frictionless uh, experience. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited to be part of this conference uh, and uh, thank many members and the, the, the whole team. Uh, a bit about myself. Uh, I have uh, uh, gained some experience uh, before the MBA uh, in banking and auditing. Then I uh, pursued my MBA in Bocconi in Milan. I joined uh, AT Kearney in management consulting right after, and then uh, I joined uh, uh, first uh, Societe Generale, and then for 10 years in National Bank of Greece, I was uh, uh, heading various uh, innovation projects. And presently, I'm uh, in crowd policy as Chief Innovation Officer. And in parallel, I work with PayPal as an external consultant uh, for business development in e-commerce uh, in uh, Greece and now in Poland. Uh, so uh, let's go. Let's start with uh, some uh, uh, initial uh, words about how payments have uh, evolved. Uh, and in, in, in a short introduction or into payments, uh, when we're talking about payments, uh, we need to understand uh, who is the center and uh, who is the receiver. So who is the originator of the payment and who is the beneficiary, these two parties, and then which are the rails connecting them, which are the what what is the infrastructure uh, it, whether it is based on cards or is it based on accounts and who controls these rails uh, these are important uh, elements uh, the form factor of the payment experience is also a key thing so uh, is it a card uh, and uh, what kind of info flows during the payment is it only uh, payment details, or is it also, in, it's including also other value-added services. So uh, the payment, uh, a typical payment uh, uh, flow, uh, this is the, the so-called four-party model. Uh, it is uh, based on two couples, uh, basically. The cardholder with his uh, issuing bank and the merchant with the acquiring bank. And what happens is, uh, of course, when there is a transaction, uh, let's say at the point of sale uh, of a merchant with a card, uh, there is a, a, transa a transaction, an info flow, starting with an info, info flow uh, towards the issuer of, of this card uh, through the acquirer and the schemes, uh, who, who the schemes Visa and MasterCard uh, provide the network and the, the glue uh, between the acquirer and the issuer uh, and in order to get the authorization. And then uh, when, this, uh, when the transaction is authorized, then you have the settlement of the funds going to the other direction from the issuer to the acquirer and uh, then to the, to the merchant. And, and of course, uh, towards, uh, during these flows, there is uh, there are some fees uh, involved. Uh, the merchant pays a merchant fee to the acquiring bank, and this in includes also all the interchange fees and everything that has to be paid to the schemes and other players. Because uh, in each transaction, of course, it's not uh, there are many other players uh, uh, that work, uh, like processors, uh, payment gateways, uh, and uh, they they all have a cut. Uh, and that's why you have, uh, a, 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 let's say, complicated uh, fee structure. Uh, of course, uh, the cardholder pays a fee to his uh, issuing uh, bank, and uh, this is uh, this is uh, something that uh, we need to have in mind when, whenever we we make a transaction, when we're talking about payments, that there is this complex uh, money and uh, info flow. Uh, among these parties, uh, and the payment ecosystem is uh, is very expanded. It's very broad. Uh, it, in order for the whole uh, payment uh, uh, flow uh, 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 in order to have uh, uh, um, uh, 
Uh, let me just share again the presentation. So we were here. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw the previous slides, but uh, basically we saw the, the, the money flow and the info flow that uh, comes uh, here among the, the four parties uh the four uh, parties and then the the payment ecosystem uh, which is very broad uh and it, it also involves uh players like device manufacturers uh, value added, added service providers uh and uh, many others that support uh all the different uh functions of the value chain um the there is a heavy uh in this uh industry there's he heavy financing uh and very strong uh, m a activity so there are many all these players uh especially in the infrastructure layer uh there have been uh, there be, there's been a lot of concentration activity among them uh and in order to get more volumes and, and of course uh the, the stripe has uh, uh huge uh, funding round last year. Uh, in terms of valuation, uh, the payment schemes are uh, leading uh, and uh, PayPal, of course, as a quite now old uh, uh, payment provider. Um, and But also Stripe uh, has managed to almost triple uh, its valuation to 100 billion uh, uh, last year due to the pandemic. And in general, payments are the very uh, to lead the leading fintech segment, uh, having the mo most of the digit, most of the transaction volumes, and uh, of course most of the of the companies uh, fintech startups. And in terms of adoption, these um, uh, payments are have been always the the driver of the adoption uh, among the users. We see here from EY adoption index. Uh, always money transfer and payments on the top. Now, in 2020, I would expect this to be around uh, 80 to 90 percent. Um, so, uh, yeah, trust and tr trust is the key uh, success factor in payments, and it, it's uh, uh, also with uh, along with transparency and uh, customer centricity. So, uh, all everyone uh, wants to have the most uh, trustful and secure let's say uh, relationship uh during the pandemic we also we all know that uh, and we have we know as users that uh, contactless has been uh, the new normal now uh for uh, the latest figures also from v for visa uh they released uh, some numbers for eu, EU and it was uh, Almost 80% of transactions right now are happening contactless, and the increase has been more than 50, close to sometimes 70% uh, year on year. Uh, so uh, this is also driven because the the limits, the limits for contactless contactless payments without a PIN, have uh, increased uh, everywhere. Uh, and uh, in terms of uh, form factor, mobile uh, is getting a boost. Uh, and it's expected also to increase uh, significantly in the next uh, in, in the following years. Uh, and uh, here is another survey that uh, probably will surpass cards uh, in the next uh, up, up to 2025. So uh, it will be uh, uh, probably the main form factor in the in the future. And let's see. Uh, in uh, digital, uh, uh, in uh, payments, uh, there is uh, where we now have the, the digital and mobile wallets leading uh, the various uh, payment methods. Uh, we see here how cash is no longer the king. Uh, it has decreased significantly. Uh, and now number one uh, payment uh, method is uh, our digital and mobile wallets. Oh, oh, this is also online and in-person transactions uh, and uh, another trend is uh, micropayments how we get used to pay uh, smaller and smaller amounts this is also driven by 
using, for example, tapping uh, on uh, in urban transportation, what happened uh, uh, in the UK, uh, in London, now is uh, rolling out in uh, New York. And in general, we saw we see that users are are you are you are, are using tapping and uh, contactless payments even for very small amounts in Greece. Uh, for some numbers we had uh, recently, 37, almost 40 percent of POS transactions are less than 10 euro, and I expect that uh, also in other countries are it's around there or even higher. So uh, just uh, going into an important factor of payments and say a few words and the impact is regulation and what's happening there. So uh, in uh, starting with uh, the concept of APIs, the APIs are, for those who don't know, uh, application programming interfaces. They're the foundation and element of what's happening right now. Uh, and uh, they started, uh, they're basically the the uh, set of product protocols and definitions connecting uh, software systems. So they started uh, very tactical, and uh, we see here from Capgemini that they started very tactical in just connecting systems, and slowly they progressed to more strategic and more uh, towards the open APIs and public APIs, where uh, now the APIs are really uh, an, uh, an instrument for uh, revenue generation. So we've, we've passed all, we have, we had the internal APIs and now we're, we have, we have the trend to be everything, to have everything exposed. And this has enabled basically the open banking revolution, uh, regulation, which is a revolution also, uh, opening up uh, access to data and, uh, uh, changing the model from uh, what we see on the left, uh, the, the internal API, uh, and uh, when the bank could control all of the data and expose them to their to the customers, now we have uh, the access to this data by third-party providers, uh, enabled by the open banking uh, regulation, uh, and we have new acronyms like access to account strong customer authentication, where we'll say a few words later, and the new models, uh, IISP, uh, Account Information Service Providers, and Payment Initiation Service Providers, PISP. And this uh, has gained significant traction so far. Some numbers uh, here where you see that uh, uh, financial institution uh, recognize and adopt open banking, uh, and also there is there is lots of almost many 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 fintechs that work on this and uh, uh, and leverage the open banking uh, uh, platforms um, in uh, the UK uh, where you have we had uh, probably the mo we have the, probably the most mature eco uh, open banking ecosystem where uh, the open banking uh, authority released releases some metrics every month where we see that we're heading towards 1 billion calls, API calls per month uh, and uh, with very high um, successful, uh, successful calls. Uh, so uh, this has been glo global trend. It's not, it started in UK and EU, but also many other countries around the globe are uh, have something similar, something similar, a set of uh, similar regulation, uh, and uh, this is this is happening all over the place. And uh, uh, the two basic uh, uh, models that uh, I mentioned previously uh, create new info and payment flows because right now, on the left, where you have the the account uh, the account information service provider, when the user just uh, asks and provides the consent to the bank to 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 have to prov to provide to a third party provider uh, access to to his account. Uh, you have models like aggregating uh, uh, various uh, info from um, and uh, transaction and transaction data from various banks into one app or into a bank banking app 
uh, because also banks can do this. Uh, or you can have the on the on the right the initiation of a payment uh, where you have uh, uh, where you have the uh, someone providing the consent to move money from uh, his banking account to another bank account. So here you have uh, basically cut you're cutting the, the all the schemes and you have account to account uh, uh, payment flows uh, by the, with the consent of the user and there are many players now who are using this type of uh, 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 account to account uh, uh, money flows like trustly uh, that uh, you have no cards, uh, you just uh, uh, provide the consent and uh, you're, uh, you're moving money like that. Uh, banks uh, have, in order to uh, be compliant with uh, PSD2, Payment Service Directive, uh, and uh, any other regulation, uh, have created developers portals. So these are portals where you, you provide to the developers all the APIs for different use cases uh, and uh, banks have tried to create something like developers community around it and uh, provide lots of functionalities. I'm happy that the National Bank of Greece is at the top quartile with very good ratings in both uh, angles, both in terms of functional scope and in terms of uh, developers experience. And of course, schemes are not behind in, uh, in this trend, they also have developers portals and they have uh, many different uh, uh, use cases. Uh, so, uh, in another element is strong customer authentication, uh, where uh, you have uh, uh, the obligation, according to PSD2, Payment Service Directive 2, to have two out of these three factors, something you own, something you know, something you are, uh, in order to uh, do to perform a transaction uh, uh, online. And this, ha this has been uh, uh, for sure uh, something that uh, is a bit dif difficult to be rolled out. That's why there, there was some delays in, uh, in the rollout. But uh, from this year, it's going to be uh, uh, effective. Uh, it is effective, actually. Uh, another um, uh, thing that uh, EU is pushing uh, is uh, the new TIPS uh, system uh, for instant payments uh, is, uh, is a kind of uh, interbanking system based on Target 2. Uh, it's called, it's, uh, the acronym is uh, Target 2 uh, Instant Payment System. Uh, where you have, uh, especially for cross-border transactions and uh, remittances, you have a, a, an instant, uh, let's say, settlement uh, between the, the originator and the beneficiary. And uh, these tip, uh, the, the banks are getting onboarded uh, into this uh, new system. And uh, uh, it's going to be changing uh, the, the way we we will be uh, moving money around. Uh, of EU is also eyeing uh, the digital euro. It's something uh, that especially ECB released a, a paper uh, end of last year. And uh, of course, uh, it's something that you might have uh, uh, heard about uh, CBDCs, uh, Central Banking uh, Digital Currencies. Uh, it's a trend that it's global. Also, China, Russia, are working on it. Uh, actually, uh, now there are many experiments on, on, on this, and um, uh, it's not going to it's not going to replace the the cash or the other forms of money. But it's definitely going to change uh, uh, how instantly everything could uh, be transferred, uh, and um, probably in the next years. Uh, well, it's going to take some time, but uh, it's going to be very uh, interesting to see how this uh, will be leveraged. Uh, another effort uh, that uh, is going on right now and uh, something that is uh, discussed in the payment in payments is the new ISO 20022, uh, 
Uh, and uh, this is a standard, a new standard for, um, again, moving money from uh, uh, cross-border, where you have a very a more rich, let's say, uh, uh, element uh, and you can uh, actually uh, transfer richer information compared uh, compared to now, and uh, you could uh, ma this creates uh, less friction in uh, between the beneficiary and the originator, which uh, right now it's quite a lot uh, for those who who know and who have tried to move move money, especially for between corporates cross border. It's something that. Uh, is uh, very, uh, it's, uh, it has lots of uh, pain points. Uh, so based on the regulation that uh, we discussed, especially the open banking, we see that the ecosystem is expanding. Is uh, It's not only in uh, uh, the typical players, uh, but we see now uh, all, all retailers, telecoms, aggregators, new bank, uh, challenger banks. We see many other emerging players uh, coming in. And the new uh, name of the game uh, right now and the new uh, uh, trend is, of course, banking as a service, uh, uh, where you have uh, providers that uh, either have banking charts and use it to expose uh, banking, uh, uh, to expose APIs, or uh, just uh, focused fintechs that uh, are basically tech providers that uh, uh, leverage this uh, open banking access uh, in order to create uh, uh, the network that connects uh, uh, the, the, the accounts. Uh, in uh, crowd policy, we have created uh, this type of uh, uh, platform called Fintelio X, where uh, we have a set of uh, set of uh, services, of course, the PISP and ASP tools. We develop uh, uh, div the developer port portals for banks uh, in, uh, in Greece, but also abroad in other banks outside Greece. Uh, and these are uh, these could be uh, used by not only by banks, but also by any other uh, uh, player in other, in other verticals that uh, want to uh, uh, become, let's say, fint fintech a little bit. And what, uh, what uh, and I, I will urge you to, to, to see, to watch this uh, talk, Angela Strange from uh, uh, Anderson Horowitz said just before uh, the beginning of 2020 that uh, in a few years, every company will be become, uh, will be fintech, will be become a financial service company because of this enablement of uh, banking as a service and the integration of uh, financial services into the into many customer journeys uh, so another element i would like to discuss uh, a, a very important thing about payments is uh, technology and uh, how technology uh, what is the role and which are the key technologies uh, in payments so in this uh, map uh, prepared by Deloitte, uh, we can see uh, the like the, the main uh, uh, innovation and uh, technologies that have happened. Uh, and in, in it's if you, when we're talking about payments, it's both digital and physical. So you can have some technologies like chip and pin uh, or uh, car readers, uh, NFC payments. And then you can have uh, digital wallets uh, uh, and uh, and the infrastructure layer. Of course, we have uh, we have seen blockchain APIs, which are which are all over, uh, also in the information uh, layer. And um, of course, in the infrastructure in the physical uh, space, there are POS, different kind of POS and ATM technologies. Uh, and, uh, and, and there are also there is also there are also QR codes that are now very pre prevailing, especially uh, in China. Uh, and uh, yeah, there there's there's lots of uh, things going on. And uh, just talking a little bit about blockchain and DLT, uh, 
besides uh, for the past years there's been uh, this revolution of uh, how the we can store in the transfer value via uh, these uh, decentralized ledger technologies initially with bitcoin but now slowly in for four to five years there are many even bank level uh, pocs proof of concepts using uh, uh, development frameworks we, we, which are something not exactly public blockchain but let's say corporate friendly uh, type of blockchains uh, with uh, more uh, uh, control uh, on on how they are used uh, in order but in order the, the concept is how you can actually create uh, a trust through the through technology and um, this is uh, a huge uh, scope of implementation there's a huge scope for implementation in payments and it's the number one probably area of implementation among uh, the rest uh, of uh, implementation areas in uh, of tlt uh, leading also supply chain uh, mobile for example ripple uh, is a well-known example of uh, how you can move money instantly uh, and uh, one pay for uh, from Santander Bank. It's based on Ripple technology, but again, it's it's a mobile app where you can you can uh, move money from uh, cross border uh, by by using the the DLT rails. And JP Morgan has also issued the JPM coin. And there are many other, and now Swift is also uh, has has also responded with a new uh, GPI system uh, uh, leveraging DLT. And uh, DLT is not uh, something; it's something that has lots of implications also, and could be used uh, in um, relationship and uh, in parallel uh, in combination with IoT. And I think this this will be the the the, the revolution in the years to come how IoT uh, will uh, uh, will be uh, able and IoT devices will be able to transact automatically and uh, what we call machine to machine uh, using uh, the, the DLT rails and using this kind of uh, 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 technology that enables uh, the smart contracts because it's not it's not only it's, it's the automation of smart contracts that uh, is the revolution and not uh, just uh, creating a, a common ledger where we can have immutable uh, uh, transactions. Uh, so uh, I think that this, this will be the most uh, interesting part in the future. Uh, another uh, payment uh, technology, uh, artificial, uh, we, we see maybe you know Amazon Go, uh, the cashierless experience uh, that has been rolled out in the states. Uh, we have uh, now it's now it's now rolling out in uh, in Europe, where you have uh, cameras with optical recognition when you just go out and uh, without going to the cashier. And uh, just wrapping up, these are the, the basic uh, technologies that are impacting uh, the the payments at the moment. It's cloud, it's DLT. And it's uh, it's a mobile, and of course some uh, AI. Uh, so, having said oh, these three, uh, just what is the customer, let's say, evolution and impact through the pandemic, and what's happening, uh, the technology aspect and the regulatory aspect, we can uh, just see six trends and what will be the future of the payment of payments. And the consensus among uh, the analysts, and here is the 11FS, where, where I agree totally, that the, the future will be embedded, integrated, and automated. And this will create the, the, the frictionless experience. And the embedment means that uh, the, the, so the payment solution will be part of the customer journey, uh, and uh, it will not be something uh, uh, outside of it. Uh, we, we will have an in, a bundle. It will be an integrated uh, solution uh, with uh, with the whole uh, with everything, uh, and it will be automated. And these are the the three the six key trends that uh, maybe uh, we can uh, we can go uh, 
we can uh, I would like to have a poll I had uh, maybe I will publish uh, this poll now and at the end uh, we can see which one prevails which one do you think that uh, uh, it will be uh, the, the main one I mean it's the most important one uh, and uh, you can do it now or you can do it after my presentation, after discussing a little bit about this. So the subscriptions are the very, uh, it's something that uh, we see happening uh, more and more. And uh, the, it, these are recurring payments. Uh, the, now the average European household pays for 21 different subscriptions, averaging 130 euro per month. Now they're, ha they're, they're like fintechs that try to provide tools to manage all these subscriptions and uh, if you want to cancel and save money or something. So uh, PayPal has a ref what it is called reference payments, recurring payments. And even open banking uh, in the UK is uh, developing a, a something called variable recurring payments uh, towards uh, for subscriptions basically. And this is a very, uh, more uh, even more a pain point for corporates that have like a series of uh, different kind of uh, uh, subscriptions that need to manage and uh, you, you need to select to manage this inventory to offboard and onboard the user when uh, there is a change so uh, it's really a, a, a huge room for uh, providing new solutions and there are some fintechs that uh, also come and tackle these challenges uh, in order how to manage all these uh, things. Uh, billing is part of the finance as a service uh, trend. Uh, this has started uh, QuickBooks, if maybe you know from Intuit, is a huge platform for accounting uh, uh, in, in the States, but there are like many, many platforms that try to provide more autom automatized and more user-friendly experiences for uh, for for finance uh, financial uh, operations either in uh, spending uh, payroll uh, forecasting or of course invoicing uh, that are more user friendly more uh, clo closer to and using apis these these are also leveraging the use of apis uh, in order to communicate there is now there's now integration, uh, maybe you know that there is now integration of ERPs uh, with uh, ERPs with uh, banking uh, accounts uh, also through these uh, platforms. Um, instant, instant is the new T that we do not accept now T plus uh, two, three. We would like to have T plus zero and T plus nothing. Uh, and this is what we discussed before also uh, in blockchain, uh, in DLT uh, um, uh, implementations like OnePay or Swift GPI. And, and BNP Paribas, for example, has developed Instania, has launched Instania, a new uh, payment initiative uh, for uh, moving money between merchants uh, using open banking. So. It uses tokens. Token is, a, is an open banking uh, provider in the UK that uh, actually provides the infrastructure and the rails uh, to have this kind of uh, functionality. Uh, in the instant, of course, we know that crypto and uh, what's hap have, has happened lately, uh, we have uh, Visa and PayPal entering the space. Uh, uh, and uh, PayPal has enabled checkout with crypto. Uh, and uh, this is something that uh, also uh, on, the, on the trend of, uh, of uh, instant. Uh, auto, autopilot, when we talk about autopilot, uh, this is uh, basically AI driven uh, uh, applications uh, and platforms. For example, Plum is an AI assistant that uh, puts aside uh, automatically savings, and then you can use it uh, to uh, investment packets. And Personetics is an Israeli uh, pro tech provider that uh, uh, provides platforms for uh, PFM and BFM, uh, personal financial management and uh, business financial management, 
towards automation. So after tagging all the transactional data, you can uh, actually have uh, insights, advice, and then automate some uh, movements. And this has been sold to many banks across the world as a, as a, as a technology and a platform. Uh, and uh, another one is the, the other one is marketplaces. Marketplaces is uh, actually uh, PSD2 has obliged uh, the marketplaces not to control the money flow. So they need, in most most cases, to have a PSP a payment service provider to settle the the money, the payments and the payouts to the to the mer to the sellers and to the marketplace. So the PSP. Uh, controls all the fund flow and settle the commission for them uh, instantly uh, in each transaction to the seller and the money, the, the, the marketplace. And uh, now there are many well-known uh, solutions like uh, Stripe Connect is one of them. Well, of course, PayPal has, uh, has uh, this kind of solution and many other, Lemonway uh, and so on. Also, Visa Direct Payouts, something similar. Um, so yeah, marketplaces are everywhere, uh, and in many many verticals. This is a, a, a very big uh, trend that we see right now, and uh, uh, that was uh, actually that it was needed to have this kind of new payment infrastructure, uh, payment solutions that could manage all these uh, 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 flows from payment flows from uh, from uh, buyers to sellers. Uh, and last but not least, the embedding trend uh, is uh, how platforms like Square, Stripe, Amazon, Shopify have embedded uh, uh, fin financial solutions besides payments, even beyond payments, uh, into their financial supply chain. And uh, it's something that Uber uh did uh, a few years ago uh, with uh, its payment pay, pay, uh, checkout invisible payment that uh, was revolutionary and Klarna the play the play the buy now pay later um, is uh, using embedding the a type of micro lending on the on the, the on the online payment uh, experience and this is forecasted to be a huge uh, um, uh, increase uh, increase and traction in the next years. Uh, this embedded finance and it's basically driven by uh, the APIs and the open banking, uh, the the open banking as a service. So these these are the new rails that uh, are leveraged to to reach uh, frictionless vo voyages in payments. Uh, the main one is APIs and. Uh, the, of course, there are other type of uh, rails like uh, decentralized ledger technologies and even DeFi uh, that uh, are uh, leveraged in order to have this experience. And it's all about, in payments, it's all about orchestration uh, of, uh, of all these different players that come uh, into play. Uh, and uh, it's about volumes and automation. Automation. Uh, always decreases the the number of uh, the, the cost the more volumes the less the the, the average cost and uh, it's something that uh, that's why we have so much concentration and uh, uh, we have uh, we've seen uh, that for the past uh, year that platforms and uh, bigger players take advantage and uh, become even bigger uh, so all in all and just to to wrap up some key take some key takeaways, uh, with, if uh, we want to wrap up uh, this presentation, the payments uh, gradually become the invisible part of the customer journey, uh, and this is thanks to APIs. I think I've I've mentioned this acronym more times than anyone any other. Uh, higher degree, there's a higher degree of standardization and regulation, uh, especially PSD2 and open banking that ensures seamless and secure experiences. Uh, so we're going to more standards, more uh, stricter regulation for sure. Uh, there is a significant percentage of payments going to autopilot with uh, PFM and subscriptions 
and that this is something that uh, you know you, you don't need to think about uh, but at some point you need also to have some uh, control uh, elements uh, and uh, as a service and platformification expands the frontiers of finance uh, into all sectors so you have everywhere in every vertical uh, embedded payments uh, and not only payments uh, slowly there is a uh, uh, there is a new uh, trend uh, besides uh, the payment, uh, the embedded, embedded of payment, uh, also going to investments or to other type of uh, financial products. Uh, and uh, it's something that uh, we will see more and more uh, in the future. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a very, a very, I would say, interesting years ahead for everyone in this uh, in this uh, industry. Uh, so in th at this point, I would like to thank you for uh, for your attention. I'm uh, I'm happy to to see if uh, if we have uh, any uh, uh, and uh, any un answer to the poll or uh, any question that uh, or clarification that. Uh, you would like to have uh, on my end. Uh, so um, just checking now the Q&A. Uh, can something stop cryptocurrency global adoption? Will decentralized finance DeFi, for example, Uniswap? It's from Alexander Mihailovic. Uh, for example, a Unisub compound maker be also adopted. Uh, yeah, for DeFi is, uh, yeah, I mentioned it uh, very, very uh, rapid, very quickly. Uh, yeah, decentralized finance is uh, definitely something that uh, is gaining traction. Uh, I don't think that uh, cryptocurrency has, has become so, it has gained such a critical mass that uh, I don't think that uh, it could be easily stopped, especially because very large players have have been invested in it. So the more you see uh, players like uh, Tesla, PayPal, Mastercard, uh, uh, Visa, and so on, uh, invest in uh, this kind of uh, um, in crypto, uh, it's going to be very very hard to revert it. Uh, so, uh, I think uh, we're going to towards, I don't, I don't, I don't know how, uh, how this would can be stopped, uh, at some point it might have an impact on the, uh, on the monetary policy because, uh, it's not uh, so easily controllable from the central banks. That's why we see central banks going into the space. And I think that's why they're rushing into in order to basically to create their own version of uh, crypto and uh, try to control uh, uh, this trend. Uh, uh, yeah, the, reg the regulations, uh, of course, it's something that uh, yeah, if you mean, uh, Alexander, that uh, there will be one day that they will say they would uh, issue a regulation that will ban totally something like uh, Bitcoin or uh, a large uh, uh, crypto. Uh, as I said, it will be difficult to ban it because of the invested uh, players uh, inside, uh, inside this, this type of coins. Maybe there will be some uh, some uh, let's say restrictions uh, on uh, on uh, the various various coins and uh, type of uh, you know all these different uh, coins that are circulate. But uh, for for the for those that for these coins for the coins that are so uh, widespread and uh, heavily invested. Uh, I don't think it will, it's going to be an easy decision to make. Uh, definitely, but, but, but usually the regulation is lagging uh, when there is a new technology. 
uh, and uh, I think the last uh, two, one, two years is one, when they started uh, looking into it uh, more, uh, you know, uh, seriously. Hope I answered the question. Uh, so, um, if there are any other, I would like to, uh, if there are no other questions, I would like to thank you. I think I have uh, ended my session here. So, thanks a lot for, uh, for your attention and hope to see you uh, in another uh, conference and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.